All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to a very, very exciting episode from the vault, from the files, from the X-Files of the Eric Anders Lang Show. This episode contains a wonderful and insightful and thoughtful, meaningful, kind interview with none other than the great wide receiver, the greatest of all time, Jerry Rice. You might hear some details in this uh, podcast, or you might see some details in the podcast if you're watching it on YouTube that might make you think, huh, when was this interview recorded? And then you would be a good listener because this was recorded about five years ago. This is actually an unused excerpt from the documentary Be the Ball, forthcoming, not out yet, but I'm very excited to share that with the world, the golfing world, family and friends of golfers to help share our plight as uh, as hopeless, hopeless fiends chasing this small white pebble around a crazy spinning globe in the rain and in the sun. Anyway, I digress. Jerry Rice is a big golfer. I first uh, ran into him over there at Half Moon Bay. There's a beautiful course up there on the coast of California, and uh, there's actually two courses, and they sit on this wonderfully uh, cliffed coastline of the uh, of the California coast up there in the PCH, uh, about three-fourths of the way from L.A. to San Francisco. And I was up there a long time ago, uh, just passing through town, and I think I got a, a twilight tea time because I don't know if you know what I used to be like, but I used to only play twilight because uh, that was the best deal around. And I also loved the lighting, and I would, I would spend the middle of the day driving. I think this was on the trip where I... I uh, stopped off in Bandon Dunes and uh, took a brief sojourn at Bandon, and all I had time to do was uh, play Shorties, which is the free uh, par-3 course, the predecessor to the preserve. Uh, they have this little par-3 course on the driving range, and I, th- I think I think you can. I think I might have paid to use the driving range and then just kind of played this par-3 course that's intended to be free. And um, anyway, I drove down, kept driving down, and went to, um, went to uh, Half Moon Bay. It's a beautiful course. I haven't been back there since, so I don't know with my new found, uh, you know, fried egg uh, school of golf architecture, whether whether or not it would stand up to Andy's, uh, you know, uh, tight uh, stamp of approval. But in any sense, it's a beautiful piece of property and it's and it all sits in the shadow, the misty shadow of the Ritz Hotel there on the uh, on the coastline with the cool Pacific breeze uh, coming in. And anyway, I, I played. I played there, and I played with a, a club fitter named uh, Carson Jones, a great, a great man who uh, helped me out with getting some clubs back then. And uh, we played together. He's a very good player. And uh, I, I saw a gentleman in the group ahead or behind of us, or somewhere on the course. It's a wide open links course, wearing all red, red pants, red shoes, red shirt, red hat. And I thought, who is that man? <laughs> I need to meet that person. And indeed, I asked who was that man, smoking a cigar, standing tall, proud and strong, big hands, big build, strong. Again, I said strong twice. (laughs) Clearly an athlete. I said, Carson, who is that? Wearing all red, smoking a cigar, (laughs) looking very strong. He said, that's Jerry Rice. And I was blown away because... You know, I was, I've was i always been a fan of sports, but especially uh, baseball. As a young youngster there, I was a fan of the 86 Mets. Gary Carter, Daryl Strawberry, Dwight Gooden. Let's go. What a team. What a team. We, we had our shot in 86, and we took it. Interviewing Roger Clemens on the podcast. I don't, if you haven't heard that one, please dive back and listen to that one. He is an incredible large. He's also very large. Um, we did a podcast in the back of a Suburban in um, Missouri. But anyway, interviewing uh, Roger Clemens was interesting for me because obviously as a Mets fan, he was my uh, my feared kryptonite, the, uh, the rocket man. Um, but I've also loved football my whole life. And as a Giants fan, the, uh, the, the uh, 49ers were a bit of a uh, problem for us. But, uh, but Jerry Rice was always just incredible to watch. His pairing with Joe Montana throughout the years was just, uh, you know, inconceivable, to quote the Princess Bride. But, uh, you know, so, so, I, so I ran, I, this is when I was a little bit younger and I maybe wasn't as confident as I am now. 
and I tentatively went up to Jerry in the parking lot of the golf course. I waited for him, and I said, Jerry, you know, I'm making this film about golf and meditation. And I feel like you'd have something to say about that being considered the greatest of all time. How did you do it? Would you be open to being in this documentary that I'm making? And he said, yes. And I was shocked. <laughs> I didn't, I just wanted to, you know, you got to ask and you never know. And when someone says yes, you're surprised all the time, even to this day. So some months later, we set it up and maybe we, we found some time together. And I flew up to a little airport uh, hotel there near his house in San Francisco, set up a little conference room and set up this interview. And I think I was all by myself. Maybe there was one other person with me, but it was very low key. And we had 45 minutes with him. And it was and it was really incredible. You'll see, I'll, I'll, I'll get off the phone now and uh, get you into this wonderful episode. Uh, so anyway, Jerry Rice, uh, here he is in all his glory. And again, if you're listening, uh, you're going to hear me say things that so I've been playing golf for five years. Or I'm a seven handicap. Now it's obviously 10 years and I'm merely a four. So there's that. Um, but if you're watching it, you'll get a view of what on earth I looked like back then. A little longer hair. Um, but uh, interview style also is probably very different, you know. Um, so anyway, enjoy the episode. Thanks for listening to the podcast. We do this for you. Thank you for listening. It means a lot to me. Um, if you're watching it on YouTube and you, and you want to get in touch, commenting is a great way. Like I always talk about on the podcast, there's no way to hear what's happening. So um, hopefully it's enjoyable. And uh, I'll see you in the showers, kids. Later. How's your golf game coming along, man? My game? Uh, <laughs> I So I started playing like five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I like fell in love immediately. And I think it's, it's addicting, ain't it? It's terribly addicting. It, it really is. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't... Um, I'm a seven, and I uh, I drive the ball great. I hit pretty good iron shots thanks to Carson. He built my clubs. Okay. He, he's the reason why we met. So so I come up. I, I he makes these clubs, and then we go play at Half Moon Bay. And right, I saw you, and right. I was like, I was like, who's that guy with all that style? And then we said hello. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so um, after getting those clubs built, my game has actually improved quite a bit. Um, I've had I hold out the other day. Oh, you did? From 100 yards, yeah. Really? That has now happened twice in five years, so I can expect it to happen 10 more times in my entire life. Have you had a hole in one? I have. Okay. Have you? One. How was it? It was 224 yards. That was my first one. Four iron? Three wood? Uh, I hit a, a three iron. Into the wind with a little bit of a draw. I uh, really didn't see it go in and went up looking for my ball, and I'm like, I know my ball is somewhere around here. And I walked to the hole, it was in the hole. It's just, you know, it's like, man, it's like, wow. Right. Unbelievable because you, you think about this over and over and, and, and when you're uh, playing partners, because I had a buddy, he got three. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, like, okay, I'm a better golfer. I, I'm a better golfer <laughs> I and I don't have really. a hole in one. Right. And, you know, but, I, you know, finally I got that hole in one and stuff like that. So right. they say once you get that first one, then they start coming, you know. Is, is the hole in one for you a... Uh, is that like a magical experience? It's sort of surreal, uh, to be honest with you, because you, uh, it's like, you know, you visualize, you know, hitting that perfect shot and uh, to have that ball go in the hole. It's just like, man, it, you're on this emotional high and, and, and you don't know how to react to it because I, I'm saying to myself, wow, you know, I can't believe I just got, you know, I just got an ace. I just got one and you know this is something I've been looking for my entire life because I've been playing the game for over 20 years and I have never had a hole in one. I've been really close many times and and you know really shoot uh, a lot of great scores. I've been on the par so many times and you would think that you know I, I would have uh, maybe three or five Yeah. because I, I, I hear some people say they have ten and and they're not good golfers. Right. But that ball goes in the hole somehow. It's the worst when you see someone like thin it and then it still goes in, right? Yeah, yeah. But but you know, uh, you feel like you're part of a very unique club, and it's the same thing when I uh, when I got into uh, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You're in a very unique club. Then all of a sudden, you get a hole in one. You're in a very unique club, and and you know, I, I get that that same type of uh, fulfillment from golf. I, I know exactly what you mean. Um, when you see someone in the airport with a Titleist hat? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, I, uh, 
that I just like when 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 someone approaches me and say, "Hey, look, I want you to sign a Tyler's ball, or you know, a Tyler's hat, or something like that." I'm like, I'm a Nike guy. You know, look at me. You know, my attire. <laughs> you know, because I'm one of those guys that feel that you have to look a certain way to play a certain way. And uh, you know, I've been with Nike for years, and and you know, I'll sign, I'll take a ball out of my bag and and sign a Nike ball for him or something like that. So is I it in your contract that you can't sign a Tyler's ball? I, I just can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. I, I can't cross dress. Right, okay? right, right. You know, I, no, you. I just can't do it. It's yeah. just like, okay, if I got on Nike, everything is Nike. It right. can't be Nike, Titleist, and all that. I agree. You know, That's I have to look a certain it. way to uh, to go out and play my best golf. I, I totally agree. All right. So, okay, so now we'll get into the questions. Okay. All, all right. right. I think I'm going to start with my favorite one, which is actually my, one of my good friends, Taylor. This is just an awesome guy. He, he just wrote this question, and I was like, it's so interesting. What's going on in your brain? when you're playing really well one minute, and then all of a sudden, you know, golf starts to fall apart, you, you freak out. I'm assuming this has happened to you. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden, you can't even make a simple putt or you know, do a simple shot, and everything starts to fall apart. And you compare that to the experiences you've had competitively, catching like a, you know, a long pass with some guy breathing down your neck, inside of a helmet, 100,000 people watching, Super Bowl, 30 seconds ago. I mean, how, how, how is it? You know, I think with Bill Walsh, and he was the greatest coach ever. And, uh, and I was very uh, fortunate to have the opportunity to play under this guy. He said, football is about ebony flow. You're going to have highs, you're going to have lows. You've got to be able to endure those lows. And I think it's the same thing with golf. You know, golf, you're going to have highs, you're going to have lows. And you got to be able to fight through that type of adversity and, and still somehow uh, knowing that, hey, if I can withstand this, then eventually those putts going to start dropping for me or I'm going to be able to hit certain shots with my irons. Uh, because you, you, you're not going to have all faces, well, all, how can I say that? Well, you're not going to have every part of the game at the same time. If I had every part of the game every time I went out, I would be a professional. Because you're gonna have days where you hit your driver well, you might not hit your irons that well, you might not chip that well, you might putt okay. Uh, but once you get all of those things together, then you're going to go out and you're going to have that exceptional round where you're going to be able to go low. Then you're going to be able to go home and you're going to feel good about yourself. Then you come back the next day and it's a whole different story. It's just like starting over again. And that's what golf is all about. And uh, it's one of those games that you can play for the rest of your life. You don't have to uh, have anyone to play with because you can always go out to the golf course and you can compete against the golf course. You know, so if, if, if I don't have a game, I can just go out and I just can compete against the golf course. So I think that's very challenging for me. When you talk about sort of the firing on all cylinders aspect of golf, and I mean, I experienced that too, my short game is yeah, the biggest yeah. weakness. Is that the same with football though? Like, would you ever yeah. go out there and be like, I didn't run the route that good or? Well, I was always one of those guys, I was a perfectionist. And I had to play that perfect game, the way I ran my routes the way I caught the football, the way I blocked for my teammates. And I would always go back to football, uh, a football game, and I would look at that game, and i say, you know what, I could have done that just a little bit better. And, and, and I think that was that little extra incentive to keep pushing me you know, throughout my career because I never played that perfect game. It's the same way in golf. Hold on, hold on. It's did, the same. Did no, you I just say no. that you've never played a perfect no. football game? No, I never did because I could always go back and I could look at that film and I say, you know what? Come on, Jerry, you can do better than that. And and, and I think that was that that motivational uh, thing that kept me uh, very humble, kept kept me down to earth, and I would just you know continue to work hard each and every week. But don't you? I mean, don't you just saw, at some point like? scroll over your stats and you're just no. like, no. you never have? No. But you know that you're 30% ahead of anyone behind you in pretty much every record you hold. I, I, I think because I never got complacent. I kept working. So and, 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 and it's the same way 
with golf. Golf is the type of game that you have to uh, constantly work on and uh, it's still not going to guarantee that you're going to be able to go out there and be exceptional. But if you do not work on that game, you don't have a chance. Same thing is what Bill Walsh taught me. He said, look, if you don't practice a certain way, you're not going to have a chance to win that football game on that Sunday or that Monday. Because you have to you know, also be uh, a player, uh, a practice player. Because then you start to build. You be, start becoming a team. And uh, we were uh, very exceptional during the week. We worked hard. And when you saw all those uh, spectacular plays on that Sunday or that Monday, we did it during the week. We knew that we could go out and, and you know, we knew that we could execute and win football games. So I can't believe I'm sitting here. It's, it's, yeah. Does it freak people out when you meet them? Or are they just like, you know what I mean? Because you just like, you were such a part of so many people's lives growing up. This is not but, really but, what but, I want to talk but, about, but, but, but I'm getting personal. But, but you know what? I think it was special for me because I was able to reach so many people because of the game that I played. I mean, I had people to say to me, I had, had people to say that they were like running alongside the television as I was running to score a touchdown. You know, you, do you realize I mean, how you able to uh, really touch so many people and, uh, and bring excitement uh, to their lives on that given day? It's just, it's, it's just so surreal because, you know, I was very fortunate to play a game that I really loved doing. But then to be able to, uh, you know, just uh, bring so much excitement to those people on that given day. See, I, I, you say something funny. You say, I was playing a game. I find that hard to believe. I really think that while you may have enjoyed it, the hours you put into it are just, and I guess really, the only way you could put in those hours is if you did enjoy it and find it playful and fun. But I guess I'm just wondering, what's going on in your mind when you are playing that game? Because I think most people look at golf like they need to. What's going on in my mind? is not to let my teammates down, not to let the fans down. That's it. Uh, and I think the motivating uh, factor for me was failure is something that always pushed me. I never wanted to fail. And, uh, and I, I wanted the fans, when they came to a football game, I wanted them to experience something that they had never experienced. And that when they walked out of that stadium, that they would say, wow, did you see what he did today, or did you see what that team did today? So that was the, the motivating uh, factor for me. And, you know, I, I think it's the same way in golf. I mean, you have to uh, visualize, I mean, visualize certain things, uh, you know, before your actual round. Because the night before, I try to really break down the course. You know, I, 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 I look at the course, I know where I can be aggressive. I know where I have to back off. I know certain spots I have to hit the ball, you know, and and uh, and I know, uh, you know, what I have to do to uh, have an exceptional round. It's it's the same thing what in is football. That? Football football is the same thing. Football. I remember Super Bowl twenty three, Super Bowl oh, wow. twenty three, against the Cincinnati Bengals the night before, visualizing the opportunities that I was had would have during that football game. Bill Walsh would always put in, and, and I always, I talk about Bill Walsh all the time. He would always put in 15 plays. 15 plays. You knew exactly the opportunities that you would have. Now think about this. Super Bowl 23, you get the, those 15 plays in the night before. Now you have it in your head. And I would sit in the room, and I would go through every play. And I knew the opportunities that I would have you know, doing that Super Bowl. Now it's just the process of going out and playing the game. And, uh, and I remember just uh, waking up the next day, uh, butterflies like crazy, because it's just not another game. And you hear, you hear players say that all, all the time. It's just another game. No, it's not. This is the Super Bowl. This is something that you, uh, you dreamt about. 
you know, being on that stage, now not letting your teammates down, you know, being able to go out there and channel everything that's happening around you and play your best football. And I, th and I think it's the same thing in golf. You got to be able to channel everything. Uh, it's going to be an uh, emotional roller coaster, ups, ups and downs. But if you hang in there and you stay, you know, true to yourself and, and you have put the hard work in, uh, it's going to pay off for you. So, but there's got to be a difference though. With 30 seconds left, well, you got well, this opportunity. <laughs> I'm serious though, because yeah. like you've got this opportunity. I'm like, what? It has to be different than no. having to make Why? a 30 Why? foot putt. What? No, 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 it's not. Because here's the deal. I mean, I want it to be no, the same the, for my the, movie. The, re do. the reason why I say is, it, there's no difference is because certain athletes, they live for that pressure. They want to be uh, put in that spotlight at that time. Now, if they don't make that play, they have to deal with the, the adversity and stuff like that. But there are certain guys. You, you look at Michael Jordan. You know, hey. Yeah, Michael Jordan, he wanted to take that, that last shot. Larry Bird, the same way. I was the same way in football. I wanted to make that play to win that football game. So if there's a 30-footer or something like that, I would love to be in that position because all eyes are on you, and if you got a routine, you stick with that routine, and you got to believe that you can drain that putt. It's the same thing. Belief. Yeah. What is that? That's everything. I mean, confidence. Uh, it's not like you uh, egocentric or anything like that, but it's just that there's a certain, you know, there's a certain uh, feel about yourself that you know that you can get the job done. And if you don't believe in yourself, you don't have a chance. So if there's a 30-footer or, you know, if you need to make this chip or you need to make this bunker shot or you need to stick it close to the pin, you got to believe that you can do that. So you got, what was it, a 17-yard pass? Yeah. Did you believe it? Did you, what, oh, yeah. what, every, he, you knew it? Was, you knew it. Every time my number, if my number is called, I believe that I could make that play. I had made it during the week, over and over. So preparation is everything. And, you know, it, it's like, and I, I was one of those uh, football players that felt that I needed to practice every day. You know, I didn't want to take days off. It kept me sharp. And I think it's the same thing in golf. You know, it, it's like, uh, if you take a couple days off from golf, you feel like, wow, like, oh, then you, all of a sudden you back over the golf ball, you just don't, it doesn't feel right, you know, so it's, it's, it's the same thing. Did you ever experience times in your career where you might have not believed it and the results no, well, were affected? Well, well, the early part of my career, yes, because I had drops. I was dropping footballs. But I was one of those players that, that, that believed that, you know what, something is wrong. I mean, there's a distraction or something is, is, is not right here. And, and I think it came down to that the playbook that they gave me, it was way too much. And I was trying to process everything because I, 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 I was one of, one of those players that came from a very small, uh, you know, black school. And I felt that pressure of uh, winning everyone over, you know, uh, not failing and you know being successful here in San Francisco. So when I first came in, there was a lot of distractions. I had drops, I went through the adversity, fans booing me, everything, and I just kept fighting. I dug in. And and I said, "You know what? One day it's going to happen." Cuz I knew I could catch a football. I knew that. You know, I had proved that through high school, uh through my, you know, collegiate career. I knew how to catch a football, but you know I just had to iron everything else out. And once I did, uh, you know everything else is history. Because you really were—I mean, you weren't like the favorite favorite, right? You no. were—you were a first-round pick, but I, I was a first-round pick. I was the 16th player taken. Uh, uh, 16th player taken. But uh, people were wary. Yeah, New England traded. They traded. Yeah. Right. 
San Francisco traded with New England to get down to that 16th spot because I felt like I was going to be a Dallas Cowboy. I was going to be part of America's team. And San Francisco had just won the Super Bowl against, uh, in 84 against uh, the Miami Dolphins. And it was right here in, at Stanford. So I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to be a Dallas Cowboy. San Francisco traded with New England. They got to that 16th spot and they chose me. And all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, Joe Montana, Ronnie Lott, Bill Walsh, uh, the greatest owner ever, Eddie DeBarlo, I'm going to be part of that dynasty. So now it became, you know, it, came, it became a situation where now I had to find myself. You know, how would I fit into the San Francisco 49ers? Coming from a very small school. And when you drafted in the first round, there's a lot of pressure. You have to be able to, uh, to excel. And when I first came in, you know, I, I think I, I really deserved, uh, you know, the booze and, and all that because I, I was not playing up to standard. Uh, but once I, I got the concept down, everything just took off for me. So, you know, your practice routine, everyone's talked about it. You've talked about it a bunch. Like, did, did, was a part, how much of your practice routine was mental, do you think? You know, Monday through Friday. Was that a mental thing, do you think, to, for, to some extent? You, you, you know, to be honest with you, I think it's almost 50-50. Uh, because I never wanted to uh, go into a practice and, and just get through it. I was always totally committed. And I wanted to learn something on every given day. I think it, it gave me that drive and it, it gave me that push that I needed uh, to try to be really just exceptional on the football field. And, and I had my teammates to tell me over and over again, they're like, why are you still working so hard? Why are you still catching a five yard slant and you going 95 yards. You the man. You don't have to do that anymore. You know, you are the man. So tell, but, but, tell but, me the but, story for but, camera. But I, I believe that you lead by example. And, and that was very important to me because if my teammates, if, 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 if they saw me still working so hard, that was going to be that incentive for them to work hard. And, you know, in football, it's a team sport. You know, you, you can't. You know, you can't win football games, uh, you know, by yourself. So it was very important for uh, certain players to set the example. And that was the reason why I, I pushed myself so hard. So the example you're referring to is during practice, you would catch any yeah. pass and run to the end zone. Yes. Sprint. Well, well, well because I, I thought it was always important to finish. Because then... That's visualization to me. Yeah, yeah. It, it's very important to finish, and then it doesn't become one of those scenarios where it's a shock when you catch the football. Uh, and you get used to finishing. So, you know, it's just like, you know, the way I, I visualize certain things, you know, in football, I do the same thing in golf. You know, getting off the tee. You know, being able to hit that driver to uh, a certain uh, area of the golf course where it's going to give me the opportunity to hit that second shot, that iron, you know, stick it close and get that birdie. So you have to be able to visualize all those shots. And, and I, I also, in golf, what I, I prefer to do, I prefer to walk the course, you know, because you, you see it so many times, you know, guys are in carts. Uh, they hit a bad shot, they jump in the cart, and they're gone. They try to get to the ball, and, and, and they don't get a chance to really see the course or feel the course. And it's like it slows me down a little bit. It plays a very important part because your heart rate also. You need to slow your heart rate down if you walk in the course. All of those things is going to factor into playing good golf. And people don't realize that. I mean, you hit a bad shot, you have to let it go. You can't think about it. You know, you, can't, you, you cannot think about it. And, and I was watching this, this one tournament with a... Uh, uh, Rory uh, McElroy, you know, he hit a bad shot with his three iron. I, I guess he thought he wanted that iron to cut a little bit. <laughs> so, you know, that was my first time ever seeing him showing uh, emotions like that. He threw his club in the water. <laughs> you know, as amateurs, you know, 
it, we, we don't, it, we sort of like, you know, because as amateurs, we hit bad shots. You, you don't see that, you know, from the pros. We, and when we see a pro hit a bad shot or something like that, you're like, okay, all right, it's okay. <laughs> Not wishing that on those guys, but, you know, that's just part of the game. And, and golf is, uh, it is one of those games that you just cannot master. You never know what you're going to get on that given day. Um, I love this, man. Um, <clears throat> how, how would you describe yourself? How would I describe myself as someone that's just willing to work? I mean, I, I started playing golf and I sort of fell into it because in 86, and uh, I was working out with my trainer. And we had this track workout, you know, where we would come in, uh, do work on the track, then also run routes on the football field. And for some reason, he brought uh, one or two irons out and some golf balls. And, I, and in between, after my workout, I tried to hit a golf ball. I couldn't hit it. A stationary white ball, I could not hit the ball. Being the ultimate athlete that I am. <laughs> so that was that, that, that motivating, uh, yeah, that motivating factor right there that all of a sudden got me interested in golf. And after that, I remember in the mornings I would go to practice Practice started around 8.30, 8.30. I would go to this driving range around 5.30. I would hit golf balls. Then I would go to practice. Then after practice, I would come back and hit more golf balls and work on my short game. So got, I really got addicted to golf and uh, sort of fell into it and uh, it's the greatest game ever. What driving range did you go to in the morning? Ah, oh my God, it was right there across, uh, uh, I really have forgotten the name of it because, God, that, that was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, but it was right across from uh, the San Francisco 49ers uh, facility. Was it off mats? Yeah, it, it was off mats and it was off grass. I, I prefer to hit off grass because it's gonna give you uh, you know, a better feel. Because, you know, I feel with mats, you know, you can, uh, you can always, you can always get away with a little bit more. You, you know, you hitting certain shots and everything is perfect. <laughs> you know, but with grass, I, I think it's gonna give you a, a little different reaction. So, you know, I have this theory that, um, you know, golf attracts a certain type of person. And um, it, it seems like it attracts people who are deeply interested in um, improving and in um, de demanding something of yourself. You know, it's kind of like if you had a video game and you could set the setting of how difficult it would be, the person who plays golf would be the person who picks very difficult on the video game. Do you, you yeah. know, and, and I think that you're a great example of that. You're someone who's excelled so much. You're clearly a very personal person. You, you clearly have had success in a lot of different areas. And then what does <laughs> golf give you? I, I, you know, golf to me is, uh is probably the most challenging sport. I, I, I you know, I, I, and you hear people say, well, are golfers athletic and all of that? I, I, I think it's just like, golf is an individual sport where it's you against the golf course or it's you in a tournament. Uh, football is a little bit different you know, because you have teammates. And, you know, if you're not on your game that day or you're not playing your best football, then your teammates are gonna pick you up. So, that you know, I think that's the big difference. But it's just like, man, it's like the most challenging sport ever because you never know what you're gonna get on that given day. And, you know, you can go out, you can compete against, uh, you know, other people, but you're really just competing against the golf course. And, and I have learned, you know, so much, you know, throughout my, 
my, my career, you know, about golf. Because I was one of those guys that when I first came, I just wanted to hit it. Just hit it anywhere, hit it long. It just and, and I was just spraying the ball all over the place and I was not scoring well. And, you know, I, I, I think I have a better feel for the game now. I know how to approach it. I, I know how to, uh, you know, try to focus on fairways, try to focus on greens, uh, you know, focus on putts, you know, and, you know, anything uh, under 30 putts, I feel like I'm going to score well. Uh, but, it, it, you know, it's just, you know, it, it's one of those things where you have to, uh, you know, you have to think through. You know, because it is, it's just, you can't go out and just, uh, just play the game. You, you, you got to think your way around the golf course and you got to make good decisions on the golf course. Or maybe another way to say it is, <clears throat> the game of golf is more about thinking. Yeah, it is. But, 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 you know, but football is thinking too. Uh, because a, as a receiver, when I come to the line of scrimmage, I got to read the same thing as a quarterback reading. I got to know exactly what the defense is doing to me. I got to know exactly if it's a man. I got to know if it's zone, all of those things. But, you know, I, I think you, if you are uh, maybe a little bit off the, on that given day, you know, your teammates might be able to pick you up. But you can't do that in golf. You know, golf, you got to be uh, precise and, and you got to know exactly how you want to attack the golf course and uh, know when to be aggressive, know when to back off, and uh, just make good, good decisions uh, on the course. Um, okay. Uh, we good? No. Oh, wait, we're good. You don't want to be done, though, do you? You're not ready to be done, are you? We've like. You got more for me? Yeah. If you need to go, we can finish it up, but. Um, Uh, okay, ready? Yeah. Is golf a spiritual game? <laughs> is, is golf a spiritual game? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll follow that. I, I'm, a, I'm a Baptist. I, I, I'm a Baptist. I, you know, I, I believe in a, in a higher being, all of that. And I was raised in the church and, and all of those things. And, and I believe golf is uh, like one of those where, you know, the night before or, you know, you, you send up a little prayer saying, hey, look, I, you know, I really want to go out and play well. I never put a number on the score, though. I never put a number. I, 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 hear, I hear that all the time. You know, I go out and I just play the course. And, 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 and I think uh, if I'm playing well, now you got to fight those other little things that's going on in your head. Because, you know, when you're playing well and you know that you might be able to go under par, there's uh, little demons going on in your head that you have to fight. So, you, you know, you might have a demon over here, you might have an angel over here. I prefer to listen to the angel and just say, hey, look, just continue to play the game. Just play the game, don't think about the score, and just enjoy it. And the majority of the time when I do that, I, I play well. So what you're referring to right there is, is a big part of the film. You're talking about the ability to direct your thinking. Yeah. Would you say you have a strong ability to do that? You have to, you have to. And, and, and there's gonna be opportunities, you know, doing a round or things that gonna happen doing a round where you're gonna have to have a very strong mind and to be able to fight through that adversity or be able to, to fight through, uh, you wanted to give in to saying, I'm playing well. Because I think once you give in to, I'm playing well, all of a sudden, you know, it only takes one shot. That, that can really destroy that round. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot going on in, in your head and you, you have to be strong. But I was the same way in football, you know, because in football, uh, if you drop a pass, you cannot think about dropping another pass because when the ball is thrown your way, if you're thinking that way, you're gonna drop it. So the second I drop that pass, it's gone, it's in the pass. I got to think about the next one and say, hey, I'm going to make that catch. I don't care. I'm going to make that catch no matter what. But you can't lie to yourself. You, you need to really think it and believe it. Yeah. Who, who taught you how to do that? Are you, are you using, uh, are you talking to God? Are you, 
because I think this is one of the things that separates great athletes from the greatest athletes. What you know, I, I think I, I think I was born with a talent, but I I was willing to sacrifice a lot to bring that talent out. But it was also a gift from God. And 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 I and, and I think also that's why. You know, I I really been so successful throughout my career, because I had someone um, that was above looking down on me. I didn't do this all on my own, and 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 I'm one of those guys to always give credit to my teammates too, because you know because it's a team sport. You know, it's no way I would have been able to go out and and catch over uh, 1,549 receptions or over 22,000. 895 yards, 208 touchdowns. There's no way I could have done that by myself. And, you know, yes, you know, you are given a gift, but uh, you have to uh, really work hard to continue to get better. Because, you know, I think a lot of individuals, a lot of people are born with a certain gift, but are they willing to sacrifice and, and do what it takes to, uh, to take it to the next level, to endure the pain, to and fight through that pain and still be exceptional on the football field when it's time. So, you know, that was something that was that was a gift, you know, from God for me. So, you know, you talk about sacrifice. I have a feeling like it was not so much of a sacrifice for you and, and maybe more of just like devotion. It, it was total commitment. It was total commitment to uh to be the best. I, I didn't want to be just one of the guys. I wanted to be the best football player to ever play the game. So my standards, they were set very high. Now it's like, okay, are I'm willing to sacrifice. Like every off season, not taking that much time off, you know, maybe take two weeks off, then I'm right back into my training. I never got out of shape to play the game for over 20 years. The lifespan of a football player is four years. And to be able to endure that and still be able to walk away from it and, 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 and still be active. And I have no, no questions when I, when I look back on my football career and say, hey, you know, maybe I should, should have done this a certain way. I always gave 100%, always. And during practice, whenever I was on, you know, the game on a Sunday or that Monday, it was always 100%. So I, I did it the right way. You, you definitely did, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but I really want to go back to that feeling of, you know, you're on the line of scrimmage. There's not, there's not a lot of time left. Yeah. The football's interesting because, you know, it's NAL to, it's, it ain't over till it's over. But what I'm really well, curious... Well, 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 see... Football is about you part of a chain. If you're a weak link in that chain, you're not going to be successful. I never wanted to be that weak link. So it's like the way we prepare, the preparation. Now all of a sudden it comes down to a fourth down, uh, you need a touchdown. You have been in that situation so many times. You have put yourself in that situation during practice. You know what to do. You know what you, what you have to do to win the football game. And that was something that I lived for. My teammates, they live for that. You, you know, because talent-wise, it might be that much to separate you from the next guy. And, and, and I, th I think it was more of just that I was hungry. I was determined to be successful in life. And after, getting to that point where you're successful, now not getting complacent, you know, you know, to continue to uh, keep pushing yourself. And I think that's why I was able to, uh, you know, survive for such a long time and, and be exceptional on the football field. Right, I, yeah. And so the, the sort, one of the things I want to do in the film is to basically look at, golf's such a great example because right. You know, all these other sports have so many other things going on. You've got a team, you've got a clock, all this stuff. Whereas golf, it's just, it's, it's, it's so simple and precise that 
I think the biggest part of what's getting in the way is the head. Oh yeah, oh yeah, because you know in golf, you got great golfers that are good golfers, but they can't, you know, mentally get through it. You know, because there's gonna be uh, ups and downs. It's just, you know, how you deal with it and you fight through it. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's hard, it's hard. I, that's why I, I think golf is just totally an individual sport. There's no one else. If you don't play well, you can't blame anyone else. You know, not saying that I, I would do that in football or anything like that, but there is nowhere, no one else that you can point your finger to. You know, you didn't play well on that given day. Uh, you're the reason why you're not making the cut. So you have to be able to, uh, to deal with all those uh, things. So I, I think that's why golf is so different and, and so difficult. Um, exactly. And so what I was thinking of doing for the movie is basically, you know, having all sorts of different levels of uh, golfers, you know, some mm -hmm. amateurs, some professionals, some starting out, basically get put into this like mental regimen practice routine, you know, where they are put, you know, basically, you know, this, this hat basically can read whether or not you're in the zone. That's the idea. And so, you know, my, I found these guys, and I and I was like, "This is amazing! I want to use this as an experiment in my movie." And so, you know, from my experience, and I found that when I'm doing this routine, my results are better because I'm not focused on the results. I'm focused on the process and my mental ability. Jason Day has used yeah. it, and you know, it's changed his game. And um, I guess my theory is that if you tried it, you would prove it because I think you would. I think you would put it on, and it would just be like it would show that you have that ability to slow time down or whatever, you know, like when you need to. You would have the ability to choose what you think about. Yeah, yeah. That's my theory. Yeah, but, but I, I, think, I think golf is uh, it's about a routine. You always got to have a routine. You know, even when everything is on the line under pressure, I mean, you still stick with your routine no matter what. And, uh, and you know, not saying that that's gonna win a tournament for you, but I, I think it, it, it really helps you to channel everything. I mean, because right at that moment, you, you in that moment. And uh, if you decide to uh, just go away from that routine, there's a good chance that you, uh, you're not gonna be as relaxed. You know, you're gonna be tense and you might not be able to make that putt. So, uh, I know exactly what you're saying, and, and it, it was the same way for me in football. Repetition was everything, over and over, because I had did it so many times. I, I knew once I got in that situation that I could make that play, and it was important. Um, great. Well, I mean, that's, that's so, so, I mean, from what I'm hearing, though, your game, your golf game, seems like it's pretty bulletproof. You know, the, the thing that I have to fight against, and, and uh, there are so many different swings. I mean, you see so many great golfers and they hit the ball a certain way, and you want to copy that. Uh, it's almost like what feels comfortable for you. Uh, you know, look at Bubba Watson. You know, he's self-taught, uh, you know, and he hits the ball really long, but you know, he, uh, you know, he, he can win tournaments. And my thing, I have to fight that because I try to copy other golfers. And when I just go back to just, you know, just relying on my feel on the golf course and, 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 and you know, that's something that I really have, have a feel for because, you know, I'm used to using my hands. And, you know, catching footballs or, or uh, whatever, it, when, I, when I go back to uh, just uh, having that feel, you know, I, I think I play well on the golf course. I have got down to uh, almost a plus one now. Uh, I want to get to a plus three. I'm determined and, and one day if I you know, continue doing what I'm doing, uh, looking at the game, the way I look at the game, the preparation, all of that, putting the time in, you know, I, I think that's possible. If I told you this device could help you, would you try it? Without a doubt, yes. <laughs> so, so. Anything to make my game better. <laughs> Well, there you go. I mean, that's it. So, um, you know, m maybe now's not the time, but, you know, because it really does help to have a sustained period of time yeah. where you can, you know, sit there at, at least like 30 minutes. So, 
you know, maybe uh, maybe I can come back. Maybe down the road we we'll, yeah. we'll give this uh, device a chance and yeah. and uh, and hopefully it, it helps my game. Do you come to? Because I want to get better. Yeah, yeah. I come to L.A. to play golf or do whatever. It's this thing. I think, I think it can be good. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I don't I don't go to L.A. to shop or anything like You're, that. My thing is to play golf. <laughs> everywhere you go, it's only to play golf. Uh yeah, I love the game. I love it. The most uh, most challenging sport that I have ever tried, and, and I think that's that incentive that that keep pushing me, and also driving me to uh, to be my best. And and I, uh, you know, I, last year I had the opportunity to uh, go to the Masters, to go on hollow ground like that, to watch those players, to play in that type of uh, environment, and. To be able to put on that green jacket, <laughs> man, that would be a, like a dream come true. But you know, I, I think I think I was blessed to uh, to play football. Uh, golf is one of those games where uh, if you didn't start playing at a very young age, you know, I you know I don't think uh, you know now is a is the opportunity or the time where I could try to transition into golf and be a good golfer. You know, I, I think I'm doing okay. I don't think I can get any further than I am if I want, but I want to try that device to get to maybe a plus three. But uh, man, I, I really have so much respect for, the, for those guys and how they go out and do battle, you know, every week and the consistency and the focus and the determination because I know how difficult the game is and uh, and a lot of work has to go into it. Well, yeah, and my, and my experience and my theory and their experience for the people who are behind it are saying, this is really the difference between the great players from the right. greatest. And, and it's that it's not physical ability, it's not technique, it's mental stability. It's the ability to not get too high after birdie or not too low yeah. after bogey. Yeah. I mean, from what I, you're saying, I, I, you have that already. Yeah, yeah. I watch some players, and uh, you know, after a birdie or something like that, they they just don't show any emotion. Uh, you know, I think as an amateur, it's like if we on the green and we have the opportunity for birdie, we just try not to mess it up. They're on a totally uh, different page, you know, because they're thinking birdie. They're thinking this ball is going to go in the hole, and we're we're thinking the opposite. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, you know, my my thinking, the way I process everything, uh, the determination, I think uh, it's the same. And uh, I'm gonna continue to work at this game, and and hopefully, uh, you know, continue to get better. Awesome. All right. That's great. All right, guys. That was cool. Thank you. That's a pleasure.